Hey everybody, I'm Stephanie and welcome to All About the Popcorn where we talk movie and Netflix reviews. We do a couple rankings from time to time and soon to come some first time watches. Today we're going to be talking about the 10 new movies that I saw in the month of December. Starting off would be Mulan. Technically it was released I think like in September or something like that. But of course during that time it was for a $30 rental and I was not about to pay $30 for this movie. Like I'm sure a lot of people did as well. Waited for it to come out in December to be in the general Disney Plus catalog for free without any additional charge. Now when it comes to the animated Mulan, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I personally am not like a huge fan of Mulan. Um, I wasn't really looking forward too too much to this particular movie. I didn't mind that there was no singing involved in the movie. I know some people, uh, those are the issues that they had with it was that there was no songs. And of course songs, you know, they have a couple really memorable songs in the animated version i enjoyed it for what it was so it's good going to be enjoyable up next would be another disney plus movie and that is godmothered this does star jillian bell and isla fisher yeah i know i'm terrible with names the godmother which is jillian bell who's like a new godmother who well not an unofficial godmother she's like a godmother in training but the whole department is kind of starting to shut down because there's no believers, there's really no more letters. So she's like, you know what? We're gonna do this. We're gonna find the perfect letter. And to find this letter, it's probably like 20, 30 years. I think it was like 30 years too late, basically. It was funny. It was cute. I enjoyed it as well. It's gonna go under enjoyable as well. Obviously, it's a family movie. It's on Disney Plus. But let's go ahead and move on to Netflix's. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. So obviously I'm gonna put it under WOW because it is one of my favorite movies of the year. I absolutely adore this movie. I'm not gonna linger too much on it because I do have a review and then I did talk about it also in my last video. I loved it. It stars Chadwick Boseman. It stars Viola Davis. It is based off of a play of the same name and it is more of a play type setting. We got some situations going on with Levy who's played beautifully by Chadwick Boseman. I see Oscar nominations for Chadwick, for Viola. Uh, the I mean the overall cast you guys in this movie was absolutely wonderful. Some of the other supporting actors would be Coleman Domingo, Michael Potts, and Glenn Turman. Let's continue on with Make. It's also on Netflix. Uh, this is a David Fincher film. We are in the 1930s. We're in the golden era of Hollywood. We're talking about Herman J. Mankiewicz or Mank, who is portrayed wonderfully by Gary Oldman. And this is basically about the writer of Citizen Kane. The recognition of, you know, writing this movie, this apparently greatest movie that's ever been made. I've never seen Citizen Kane. I'm sure if you've seen Citizen Kane, you'll have more of an appreciation for Mink. Now Mink really is a movie for the critics, not necessarily for the general public. And I'm gonna go ahead and incorporate myself within that general public. I am just like a little baby, a little baby critic, you know. Technically, the movie itself is wonderful. It's great to look at. Uh, it does also star Amanda Seyfried. She may also get a nomination for her performance in the movie. She did great. I just personally couldn't get invested within the movie. I was bored. So I may get some hate for this, but whatever, it is my list. For me personally, Mink uh, was just an okay movie. Also, before I continue to move on, I totally forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video. Um, I don't know for my returning people if you caught this, but I did change the last uh, tier name on here. It used to be forgettable just because I wanted to be nice and just not call a movie bad. But you know what? We're in a whole new year. We're changing things up this year just a little bit. Um, so moving on, that doesn't mean that the next movie is absolutely bad. Could be. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, would be Songbird. Now this movie a lot of people hate a lot of people would probably put it under bed i did do like a little brief review on my instagram from time to time i do kind of like raw unedited reviews i go live on there and i post it up on my channel because i'm just lazy no one to come on here and edit to be honest with you i'm not even gonna lie so this is one movie that i did talk about there first of all the title i don't understand the title because there's no singing birds there there's not even like a nickname like they're saying oh you're my little songbird or whatever i don't get the name for the movie to be honest with you the hate on the movie honestly is because it's it was done too soon it really was because we're technically 
we are still going through this pandemic as we speak and not only did you do a movie about a pandemic but you enhanced the virus to be even more dangerous so I, I get it I get why people hate it but we are like in 2023 I think that's where we're at and the coronavirus has now mutated to COVID-23 and it's even worse than it is now because you cannot even go outside because I mean it's just in the air. I found it to be very interesting because I'm like you know what this is shit that can actually happen because people are not doing what the fuck they're supposed to do and of course you can't have a, a pandemic kind of movie with that little love story going on there and then we have a couple other little side stories as well. I mean, Sophia Carson because on this movie I love Sophia Carson she's so cute. It also stars KJ Apa, Demi Moore. I'm just gonna go ahead, go ahead and put it under you tried. Let's continue to move on to Amazon Prime's Sylvie's Love and this movie was actually really good. It's such a cute love story. I think it's one of the best romantic movies that I saw in 2020 to be honest with you. It does star Tessa Thompson and she plays Sylvie. It's basically about summer love that she found with Robert, a sex player, who ended up getting a job at Sylvie's father's record store to get closer to Sylvie. When they cross paths again years later, they just find out that they are just pretty much meant to be and it's such a beautiful movie. I love it. Moving on to Netflix's The Night Sky uh, starring George Clooney. We are in the Arctic where with George Clooney he's a lone scientist in the Arctic and he's trying to get to this other satellite deal that's stronger than where he's at to warn some astronauts who are trying to come back to Earth to not come back to Earth because of the catastrophic deal that is earth now and is trying to just warn them before they you know come here we have what's happening down in the arctic on earth and his journey to get to his destination and when the, the struggles and what he has to go through and then of course what's happening up in space with the astronauts and you know them not knowing at all what's happening over here it is beautiful to look at but the overall movie itself uh, it was one of those other ones that was a little bit not as entertaining, so I'm gonna just put it under okay. Was it absolutely terrible in any shape, way, or form? Let's go ahead and move on to Wonder Woman 1984. The long anticipated Wonder Woman, once again directed by Patty Jenkins. A little timestamp if you haven't seen Wonder Woman and you, you know, don't want to get any spoilers, you guys can go up ahead i do have a lot of issues with the movie because it has a lot like a lot of unanswered questions we're in the 80s and there's just not really too too much like 80s stuff going on like like the way that they're talking didn't give me 80s vibes there's no 80s music i felt it more you know in the first wonder woman that we were you know within that time like what's the point of fucking calling it 1984 the body that steve lands in like what the hell happened with his own personal life did steve just kind of like possess him what the hell and then like when steve like when you know when the wish was renounced when he came to, did he come to in the, like, there in the middle of all this chaos? Like, he's probably like, what the fuck is going on? Also, with the wish, Wonder Woman technically never officially verbally said her wish. She just said, I know what I want. And then they had, like, a whole Rosa de Guadalupe moment with the wind. Where are my Mexicans at? Have y'all seen the movie? Did y'all think that? Because I was like, every time it would happen, I'm like, oh, Lord, there goes La Rosa de Guadalupe. It was okay. <laughs> It was okay. There was a whole other review there of Wonder Woman. I went too long on that. Too long. We're talking enough about so, you guys. So we talked enough about Wonder Woman, but so is next. This is Disney Plus's um, movie. Of course, it's another one that was anticipated by a lot of people. If you've seen my last video, top ten of the year, you'll know where the rankings go for these movies. Or sorry, if you've seen my Pixar rankings, you'll see where this particular movie falls within that. For me personally, Soul was just enjoyable. I love the way the animation looks overall. I mean, the, what they did with New York City was just like, wow. I mean, the detail and everything from the little street mouse with the pizza coming around to the barbershop. Coming in lastly, you guys, I, I, I lingered too much for Wonder Woman. Would be the last 2020 movie that I saw. I snuck one in 
at the very last moment and that would be let them all talk this is movie 110 I was trying to shoot for 120, but it didn't quite work out. We'll see if I can do that in 2021. Let Them All Talk is about an Arthur who's played by Meryl Streep who ends up uh, winning an award and needs to go to England, but unfortunately she does not like to fly. And they end up sending her up to go on this uh, cruise on the Queen Mary to get to England. And she ends up asking the publishing agency to let her bring three other people with her, which would be her two friends former best friends and her nephew who is played by Lucas Hedges. Now the two friends are played by Candace Burchin and Diane West. Basically about how the success of one of them really affected the whole group in general. Now this one actually is on HBO Max. It's the only one on my list that's on HBO Max. The goal of one particular friend on this particular trip was she's trying to do just because again of certain consequences that happen because of the success of one particular person which would be Meryl just really turned that other character's life upside down. But the ending of this movie just came out of nowhere for me. Like I'm just like that happened? Really? I didn't see it coming. Um, oh, I just noticed I didn't put it anywhere. Um, it was... It was okay. It was an okay movie. And these are the movies that I saw in the month of December 2020. I almost forgot to do this video, but I'm glad that, you know, it's still early on in the month, so we're good. Of course, like always, anything that I did uh, review on my channel will be linked in the description box down below if you want to get a whole, like, take on what my overall thoughts are on each individual one. I'm just trying to, like, you know, give you little things here and there. I did talk a lot about Wonder Woman. I know. It just, yeah, I have a lot of questions, and that was, like, right when they came out so of course I didn't want to like give all those out during that particular time but yeah let me know what did you guys watch did we watch any of the same things how would you rank the particular movies of course like always before you guys click out of this video don't forget to give it a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I post something new until next time I'll see you guys at concessions bye